Hello everyone and welcome to another great episode of Terrible Tabletop Tutorials from the Corona Quarantine Kitchen. As always, I'm your host, MD Welch, and today we're talking about flash or strobe photography and balancing that out with ambient light. Now, full disclosure, I am a location photographer. I don't work in the studio that much. So balancing out my speed lights or my strobes and trying to make them match or mimic the light that already exists at a location is job number one when I'm working with light. So this is a, a subject that's near to my heart, but I do want to stress that this is not going to be a complete tutorial on all things strobe or flash photography. There's a lot of great tutorials out there. I could also do some more tutorials if you're interested in flash photography, but we're going to go right into balancing out flashes with ambient light. So let's first talk about our subject today, and that is amazing actor from television shows like Castle and The Rookie, and one of my favorite sci-fi TV shows of all time, Firefly, and that is Nathan Fillion, or Nathan Fillion's pop figurine, because I don't know Nathan Fillion, and we're also on social distancing, so I couldn't have him in the kitchen anyways. Now, what we're going to do today, and even though that we're doing still life, I can't stress this enough. Still life photography is a great way to start to experiment with strobe or flash photography, learn the different features of your gear, and actually see how making subtle changes with that equipment can really impact your photography. We're working with two speed lights today. Um, and specifically, I'm working with the Nissan brand of speed lights. Uh, full disclosure, I uh, got the speed light kit from a local Nissan rep. Uh, I want to say that they are good flashes for the value. Uh, the kit comes with two speed lights and a transmitter, which is currently on top of my Sony A7R Mark IV. Um, all told, this kit is far less than a single speed light from one of the big manufacturers. Now, is it as good as one of those speed lights? Eh, it depends on what you're using them for. I think the manual mode um, for these speed lights works out really well, and it's a great place to start. If you have more questions about these speed lights, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Now, I'm working with two speed lights, although I can't stress enough that you should probably start off with working with one light source and then build uh, upon that as you get more comfortable. You add a second light, it's like you have four times as many problems. But I am gonna use two speed lights today because I wanna really play around with the ambient lighting going on. Now, both of these speed lights have already been modified a little bit, and I just wanna talk about those modifications just a touch. Now, my primary light is going to be this speed light here, and it already has been modified. It has this mag mod strap on here. Um, there's a lot of companies who make a lot of different pieces of equipment that allow you to modify a speed light. Uh, I think MagMod actually makes a really good product. I'm not sponsored by them. I paid for this out of my own pocket, uh, but I really like it. The only thing I'll say against it, it is heavy, and I will say on, uh, on speed lights, I always feel like it's going to break the head. I think it's great for uh, this type of work and being on light stands, but walking around with these big uh, units on your flash, I just feel like it's gonna bust the hinges when you put all of that stuff on there. So just something to be aware of. And we'll talk about why I have this on there in just one second. Now the other flash, which is going to be uh, my group B, this is going to be my group A or my main light, and I'll talk about some lighting terms in just one moment. But my second uh, speed light here has already been modified. It has a gel already put on it, uh, just because I didn't want to have to install this while I'm doing the video. Um, I have small little cut pieces of gels already. I am using for both of these lights, which you'll see the other uh, uh, gel on the mag mod in a little bit. I'm using a gel called CTS or uh, color temperature straw. I prefer this far over CTO, color temperature orange, because it doesn't have any real red in it. So it doesn't have a tendency to red up people's faces. So something to think about if you've worked with gels quite a bit, but you haven't worked with CTS, it is a great set of uh, gels to put into your kit. Uh, I am uh, fixating this gel with something uh, very simple. Uh, it could actually be a rubber band, but in this case, I'm using a little LumaQuest, again, not sponsored by them, little uh, Velcro band here. It just goes around the actual flash there uh, and then tightens up. And if you put Velcro on the gels, you could have a real quick way to take these things on and off. And they have their own system of uh, light modifiers. Now, I've already turned uh, one flash on, and that's going to be my group A. That's this particular flash. Uh, group A or groups is just a way to balance out power to make sure that you have the right power on a flash unit. So um, by having flashes in different groups, it just gives you more control. 
Uh, and it's worth spending time to read your manual. There we go, everything's in focus now. It's a great way, it's a great thing to do to read your manual and learn about groups. Now, if you're only working with one flash, you don't have to worry about groups. Uh, it doesn't matter whatsoever. But this is already in group A, and this is going to be my main light, or what is called my key light. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of set it over here and place it over off to the side. And we also have an overhead shot uh, today as well, so it's a little bit easier to see the distance on these items um, as we're working. Now, if we cut over to the camera, I've already put my figurine in place here, um, and I have set up the camera in manual mode, and I'm also working with the flashes in manual mode, and that would be my first big tip for everybody just starting off. Do not try to work in any sort of automatic mode on these cameras or flashes, because depending on the system that you're using, you could find that you're going to get a lot of different results. Some camera companies handle this better than other camera companies. I'm not gonna say who, I'm not gonna say which models, but I will say that sometimes even not only the companies, but different models of camera and flashes work differently. So a great way to negate this problem is just start off by using everything in manual mode. It's easier to predict, it's easier to just change one one setting at a time, it makes working with these flashes far easier than trying to also understand why the camera's automatically changing flash power. So I'm in automatic mode here. Now, I have my curtain open on my uh, main patio window here, which is my main light source. I'm gonna go ahead and close that so you can see what the actual light is gonna look like inside my kitchen. Now, if I hit my, uh, I have a button here to toggle on or off the lighting effects on my camera. If I turn this on, so there we go, I can anticipate what this is going to actually look like. Now, I'm gonna also turn off my uh, speed lights here for the moment, there we go. And the reason why I do that is, especially on the Sony systems, I have found that when you turn on the live effect, or basically what you see is what you get, anticipating your exposure before you take the picture, Turning that on with flash, sometimes it will try to anticipate what the flash is going to do and make the scene brighter than it really is with your camera settings. So I turn off my flashes. And that's tip number two. Before you do anything with your speed lights or your strobes, and when you're working in an ambient lighting situation, do yourself a favor and turn everything off and get your ambient exposure in camera first. Take a picture and see what the light is doing. Now, in this particular case, I can anticipate kind of what the light already looks like without taking a picture, although I'll just go ahead and snap this photo really quick so it'll pull up and capture one in a moment. But I'm just gonna lower my shutter speed a little bit and we could see as I lower my shutter speed that that ambient light gets a little bit brighter and if I increase it, it gets a little bit darker, which makes perfect sense. But when you're working with strobes or flashes, it's important to understand that the shutter speed is the only part of the exposure triangle that is going to not affect flash power, meaning you can increase it or decrease it. There are limitations to this, but you can increase it or decrease it and get only the ambient light to change. It's not going to impact anything coming out of the flash, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, your aperture, your f-stop, and your ISO will impact the power of the flash. Increase your ISO, things become brighter, so will the flash. Decrease your aperture, everything will become brighter, so will your flash. But your shutter speed, your shutter speed is going to pretty much be only affecting the ambient light. Now there's exceptions to this. You go too high on your shutter speed. On my camera, it's about one two hundredth of a second. You won't sync up. You would have to go into something called high speed sync. If you go too low though, you will start to impact your subject because the light will start to just basically wrap around from that backlit source and we'll get a lit subject here. But that's not the look we're going for. I'm not gonna really worry about this too much. I'm just gonna go with a tenth of a second. I've already taken one picture of that, so that's gonna be fine. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power on my little remote here. And I will come over to here, get this a little bit better viewed. Now the remote on the camera is going to remote control the actual speed light here. And I have the speed light set up fairly close. Now, when you're in manual mode, these flashes actually have a specific uh, set of power settings. Full power is called one over one. That is full power on most company speed lights. Um, as you start to go down a stop, meaning you get make the image or the power 50% less, you would get into one over two, then one over four. And in this particular unit's case, it goes all the way down to one over one, two, eight. That is a very low amount of power. Now the Nissans don't give you third of a stop increments in between those whole stops. So it is a little bit rough. Some companies do give you third stops in between those. So you might see a little bit of extra information there. Now, 
with our very dark subject here, I'm just gonna set my flash, as you can see here, I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit. And we could see that it's kind of a little bit at a side angle or a, a kind of, yeah, almost a complete side angle here, although the figurines turned. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take a picture and we'll go ahead and see what that looks like. Now, even though that I have this flash all the way down at its lowest power setting, if we come back over to capture one here, we can see that the power on or the output is so high that we're blowing out any sort of details on the figurine. It's just way too powerful. Now, this wouldn't really be a huge problem on any other type of photography other than tabletop. But since tabletop is usually so close, this can be a little bit problematic. Now, I don't have a lot of other options here. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna slide this back a little bit. There we go. And I wanna say that I've probably doubled the distance. I'm also getting very precarious to the edge of my counter. And I'll go ahead and take another picture. Now, if I had the ability to lower the flash power, I would, that would be preferred. But because I can't do that, I only have one other option, and that is to lower the flash power. And we're able to see here, if I double click on this, we're able to see that there's a little bit of detail there. There's a little side of this face that's still being a little too bright. We could see it's at 255 here. So we have a little too much uh, power going on. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna kick my curtains open again. So it's a little bit easier to see. And let's just modify this flash a little bit because I know I need to do some modifications. Now, anytime that you put something in front of the flash, it is going to cause a loss of power. The, the light has to go through that. So it could be uh, a diffuser, it could be a gel, uh, it could be a multitude of items. So before I worry too much about the fact that this flash is so powerful, I'm going to attach my two items here. Now, the first one that I'm going to attach is this actual gel. Uh, and this is part of the MagMod system. So this is a full cut of CTO, I believe. I mean, CTS, no, I'm sorry, it's a half cut. So this is going to be a little bit more on the white scale comparatively to the backlights in the background. So a little yellow, but not a full amount of that warmth going on here. Now, the nice thing about the MagMod system, as long as I have this turned the right way and I don't, it will just go ahead and slap on there and there we go. Now, before I do anything else, because I was mentioning earlier that you should do one thing at a time, and that's a great rule to follow, I'm not going to add what I know I want to add, and that's this grid. I'm not gonna add that right now. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. Why? Because I want to be able to see what's going on, not only with the light quality, but also the power coming out of it, because both are going to be changed a little bit. And we can see here that there's just ever so subtle of a change but now the figurine's just a little bit more yellow. It's mimicking that yellow light in the background. And I'm gonna do a white balance in a little bit uh, to correct this. But for the moment, I got my warmth on my subject and it's mimicking or matching or manipulating that practical light, this movie term about trying to make sure that your lights match the scene that's going on here. So I have yellow light in the background. I'm trying to create the illusion that the figurine's being lit by those lights. And now I have something that's a little bit more yellow but it's still a little too bright. If I come to the highlight here on the far figurine, I'm right at the brightest area, right at 255, and it's just risking losing detail. So I am going to open up the curtains again so you can see what's going on, come back to my flash camera or my flash angle, and now I'm going to add a grid. Now I'm adding this for two reasons. One, grids do cut power. They do cause a loss of power in the unit. Um, that's going to be necessary here. I'm gonna get a little bit of loss of power. But also, I don't want that light going all over the place. I wanna focus it a little bit. So I'll go ahead, attach that. Again, beauty of the MagMod system, magnets, really nice. Downside of the system, heavy. So I'm gonna come over. Again, I, all that I did was added that grid. I'm not gonna change power. I'm not gonna change location uh, of the unit. And we'll go ahead and see what this looks like. We'll come back into Capture One here wait for that to load, and look at the difference. Not only do I get a better exposure on the figurine, but notice that there's just a little bit less light on the actual uh, area. Like there's a little bit of light that's spilling on my refrigerator in the background in this shot. Now that's gone away, right? It's a little bit more focused. So I think what I need to do here, I will cut to my overhead camera scene, is I'm going to move this even further away and try not to go over and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit more. I don't mind that it's side lit a little bit. I like that drama. Also my subject still turned into the light, such a cooperative subject, you gotta love it. Take another picture. 
wait for this to load. And now we have an exposure that's getting pretty close to where I want it. I still have just a little bit of highlight here, but if I look here in Capture One, I'm getting 241, not 255. So I'm not losing all of that bright, or I'm not blowing out any sort of details there whatsoever. So now I have my, uh, my base exposure going on here. Now before I get into the second flash, let's just play around with something a little bit. What if I wanted those lights in the background to be a little bit brighter? If I lower my shutter speed, if I go down and say a full stop, so from one tenth to one fifth, taking the fraction in half, that's a full stop of light. I'll take a picture there. And then I'll also go the opposite direction. I'll go from one tenth of a second to one twentieth of a second and take that picture as well. If we come back over to capture one and we wait for this to load, we will see, so here's my, everything's looking nice at one tenth of a second. Now here is dragging the shutter a little bit to one fifth of a second. So everything becomes a little bit brighter, but notice that the light on my subject doesn't change because the light's not bright enough in the background to really start to wrap around the figurine, but it is bright, the shutter speed is a full stop brighter. So now I get that extra little amount of light. And if I take it one stop down, right, now at 1 20th of a second, so from 1 10th to 1 20th, that's a loss of one stop of light in the background. Now we have a little bit more of a moody background going on here. This difference between these three exposures is really a personal choice. There's not a right or wrong. I think for the moment, I'm gonna stay with 1 20th of a second uh, just moving forward because I want to now introduce another element. And that other element is going to be my second flash. Now I'll go ahead again, I'll kick on my lights here and I'll go ahead and drop in my second flash and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Now, my second flash is going to be, or it's already in group B, right? B is in boy, right? This means that this flash can be, have its own different, a different power setting than group A. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my overhead camera here, and I am going to actually just handhold this light. Uh, right now, my power setting on group B, it's actually a little bit brighter. It's at one over 64, one sixty-fourth of a second. I'll actually come into my remote here, and I'll go ahead and pull up group B. And I think I'm just gonna lower that power all the way. So I have group A and group B almost at the exact same power, but they're at radically different distances because I need to stay somewhat close here. So what I'm gonna go for, uh, it might be hard to see in the overhead shot. I'm gonna go for a light source that's behind the subject, but out of frame here a little bit. I'll actually probably hold it upside down so I get a little bit of a better spread. And I'm not setting up a light stand here. You would probably want to put this on a light stand so you could see it a little bit easier or be more consistent. But just because of the way that we're doing this time-based, I'm not going to set up a stand here. I'll go ahead and take a picture. And I'll flip that around and kind of put it in the same spot. I'll walk over to Capture One. And now we have this kind of backlit look here. Now I'm getting a little bit of light flare. I don't have another grid. I can't focus that light beam. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of actually like that. That looks uh, pretty cool. We have this nice light separating, so we have light coming on. Now what this light's doing is it's doing two things. Not only is it separating our subject, a hair light or separation light, but it's also creating a more realistic look. There's lights in the background that would be spilling onto the back of our subject here, but and they're not powerful enough to reach our subject. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again and maybe just take that distance. I'm right about there. I'll bring it up. So about twice as far away and I'll go ahead and take the picture. And I wanna say I was about that far away. I don't know if that's in the top angle or not. So there we go. So there's our subject backlit and there's with a little bit of flare. Now, because this is handheld, the problem with handheld lights is that, you know, voice activated light stands when you have an assistant hold something. The only problem is, is it's very difficult to go back and uh, recreate that exact same look over and over again. So ideally putting this on a light with maybe a little bit of a boom would be a better way to go. Again, consistency, being able to move one variable at a time. Now, I have a little bit of husky hair hanging off our uh, pistol here of our subject. I'll go ahead and hopefully clear that away a little bit. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take one more shot. Turn the figuring a little too much on my adjustment, 
but that's not too bad. You could see the direction that I'm going in. From here, you know, you could play around with a lot of things. If you have gels, now you could start playing around and you could gel the lights a little bit differently. You could actually add colors rather than trying to mimic things if you wanted to. Um, you could play around with the direction of the light. You could stay with one light source. Keep in mind you want to have your strobes and or flashes in manual power and your camera in manual power. That's always a big thing. Don't lose sight of how important shutter speed is and how it's really only impacting your ambient light. Uh, so once you get your flash power dialed in, don't hesitate to increase or decrease your shutter speed one, two, maybe even three stops and see what it looks like in one direction or another because your shutter speed is going to give you that level of control. Always think about the quality of light coming from your ambient lights and what you would want your strobes to do. So we gelled, we added a little bit of grid, we created a backlight to kind of mimic those things. All of those tools are necessary to kind of manipulate that practical and create a realistic lighting situation. Well, that wraps up our tutorial for the day. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed producing it. I want to wish your friends and your family all the best. I hope you're staying healthy during this very difficult time. Um, please message me with any comments, feedback, or requests for future videos. I wish you all the best. Take care.